Case Customer Creations is sponsored by Bits and Bits. Use the code JBates to save 10% off your next router bit or CNC bit purchase at bitsbits.com. Hey folks, I do and hopefully you're all having a great day today. In this video, I want to share with you something that I've been having a lot of fun with lately, and that is making scaled down versions of my pro or scaled down models of my projects just for reference sake, for you know, documenting, for my daughter to play with with her dolls. Regardless, I, I wish I had access to this technology or a laser engraver 10 years ago when I first started making furniture for the house. I think it would be so cool if I was to make one of these for everything that I've made to have all these little models floating around the shop or in, in one little location to where if you, you have a thought like, oh yeah, did I, I, had, I did this one particular design years ago on this one particular project, but you know what? I gave it to so-and-so or I sold it. I no longer have that project. Well, if you had these models, you could glance at them and be like, oh, I remember that. It was, I did it this way, right? So I think it'd be cool for archiving purposes, for being able to reference it at a moment's notice in your shop. I think it's cool to be able to incorporate it in the, into, in the design process up front and think, you know what? I don't like the way that the shadow is in this particular situation. Stuff that you can't always dial in in the digital world on the computer. So if you've been following me for any length of time, well, not like legit follow me, that's creepy. If you've been following my online journey for any length of time, you'll know that I like to, to start my design process in SketchUp. If you're not familiar with SketchUp, it is a 3D modeling software that's completely free. There is a paid version, but for woodworking, free version is completely fine. Um, also, you can go back to the old Google SketchUp 8, one of the more popular older versions that's pretty stable and does the job just fine, completely free, offline, all that good stuff. So uh, with that said, I like to start my design process in SketchUp. Get a full 3D representation of what I'm working on in the digital space. And then from there, I have options on how I want to proceed. I can just take screenshots with some dimensions, print that out. If I just want some quick reference dimensions to take with me in the shop, I can uh, put it over into layout to make my plans to follow along here in the shop. I can take that 3D model and put it into VCarve Pro for use on the CNC machine. Many different options, and now I have one more. I can take those vectors that I create on, in SketchUp and put them into laser engraving software, cut it out, and make one of these models. It's important, though, that if you do this process, you have to take into consideration the final material thickness that you're going to end up with on the scaled version, because that's going to determine the more appropriate scale that you can use to actually cut this out. To get the most accurate scaled model, you first need to figure out what is the most accurate or most appropriate scale for this particular project. In this case, it's six. So what is the most common material thickness in all of furniture and all of woodworking? In my opinion, in my experience, it's three quarters of an inch thick. Whether it's solid wood like this or plywood, three quarters of an inch thick is king. That is the most common material thickness. What material thickness do I need to end up with on the laser engraver? Well, one eighth of an inch plywood panels is the most common material that I'm cutting over there. So that's convenient for us. One eighth of an inch is very easily divisible into three quarters of an inch thickness. So what is three quarters of an inch in terms of eighths? Three quarter is the same thing as six eighths. Well, if we have one eighth of an inch here and six eighths of an inch here, the math is simple. If you wanna go down, you simply divide by six. If you wanna go up, you simply multiply by six. This is also very convenient for this particular project because this project, if I'm not mistaken, I used two by tens. I ripped the center pith out and then I had some nice quarter sawn material on either side. So this was one and a half inch material thickness. Well, if we know that three quarters of an inch divided by six equals this one eighth of an inch and we need two of these thicknesses to equal this, well then we can simply multiply or, and add two material thicknesses here to get a very accurate scale. So I don't know if you noticed when you were close up over there, uh, but this top panel, there's two pieces of this plywood stacked on top of one another. This side panel right here, there's some depth here. There's the, the frame that goes around it and then the panels on the inside, they're at different depths. And I was able to achieve that by stacking two of these on top of each other because two one eighth of an inch panels on that six to one scale scales up perfectly to an inch and a half for this particular project. So it may take a few seconds for you to wrap your head around that if you've never scaled any projects before, but you can, you can find what multipliers or what is, what is easily divisible on your final project to get to whatever material you're cutting out. 
One sixth is what we're working with today, or not one sixth, six to one or one to six, depending on if you want to go up or down. Here we are in SketchUp. Once again, we can use the free version of the software. I have the pro version. Don't let that fool you. Uh, for extensions, I want to mention two extensions that I am using that are very helpful. One is Curic Align, and the other one is Face SVG Export. SVG is necessary because uh, Xtool Creative Space only allows importing of SVG at this moment that I know of. So the first process or the first thing to do is to, once your model is completed, we're going to copy it over to here. And I've already done all this. And then once you have your copy, you kind of want to lay it out in the same orientation like I've done there. Let me delete the copy. Now let's just say as you lay this stuff out, you have one or two or basically every one of them is on a different elevation. That's really, really annoying. And that's where the second plugin that I want to mention comes into play, this Curic Align. So I'll select all of these, press Curic Align, or this Align button, and now I can align by the exterior boundary box that all of these are sitting in, this invisible boundary box. So I can put it all on the top. I actually have these in the bottom layer down there. That's fine. I can grab the bottom if you want. You can put it on the right. Drop it there. There you go. Now they're all aligned. That's important because what I want to export is a face. This extensions Enroth SVG exporter it exports from a top-down view. The problem is, if there is material thickness, it'll duplicate every single one of these components because a top and a bottom face. So with all these on the exact same plane, I'll change my camera to a parallel projection. I'll go with a front view, so I'm looking on this way, looking on to the thickness, right? So let's press the front view. And now what I want to do is grab all of these, if they are components, components like they should be, then I need to right click and explode all of those. That way I can use a crossing and not a window. Remember if you grow, if you click and drag from right to left, that is a crossing in SketchUp. So anything that crosses the perimeter or is inside the area will be selected. So all of the bottom faces plus vertical faces will be selected. I can press delete and now I'm left with just the top faces. This is a super, super simple concept, super, super simple uh, process, uh, project here to demonstrate this on. So this is all the information that I want. I'm going to select it then go up to Extensions and Enroth SVG Exporter. And the cool thing is, I've already done this, so it says, uh, what scale do you want? Normally it starts out as one to one. Well, we've already determined we want a one to six scale. So it's actually going to export on my scale. Press OK, and then you save it wherever you want to save it. Here we are in Xtool Creative Space, and we want to import the vector. I prefer to just open up Windows Explorer and drag and drop that vector file, that SVG file, right into place. Now keep in mind, if these are spaced out greater than the working area that you have, you will be asked to scale it down upon import. And in this case, don't do that because we've already exported at the correct scale, assuming we modeled at the correct final scale or final size. So let's click to deselect all this. And you notice we have all these different colors. That's pretty cool, right? If you go back to, if we switch back to SketchUp, you can see that I already changed some of these colors. So while it may not have this exact color, greenish brown, whatever that is, it will change it and add it to a different layer if it has enough colors to choose from. So in this case, we have four colors that are imported. That's very handy in certain situations because with the latest version of Xtool Creative Space, you can now finally, thankfully, click on this, uh, expand this layer tab and you can hide by certain layers if you want to see or don't want to see certain layers. Uh, it's, it's very, very, very handy. Did I hide them? All right, bringing them back. Let me make sure I didn't mess up here. All right, they're all back. So now with this, we want to optimize our, our cut, right? So for here, I'm just going to wiggle them around just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to grab all of this left-hand side. I'll align left. And we have a lot of wasted space in between. So the easiest way to do that is to grab the bottom one or two, drag them up, and then select all this once again. Align left, because I wiggled that around. Align distribute vertically. Now, if I click that, because I drag them up, now I have a lot less space in between. And you know what? I'm okay with that right there. One thing to note is the material that I'm going to be cutting this on is just a 12 by 12 rectangle. So what I want to do 
is press R for rectangle to start a new one. And I'll hold shift and click and drag an extra rectangle in place. I will change the dimensions here to, I believe it's 11.75 square. This is locked, so it should remain 11.75 square. I'm going to change the position to zero tab zero. So it starts in the top left, which is how I cut. And I'm going to, while this is selected, go over to the object setting and change it to ignore. That way it doesn't cut this. All I'm using this rectangle for is the size of the material that I'm working with. This left side over here looks pretty good, uh, but all of these others, we need to click and drag and kind of move them in place where it makes sense. Let's lower, uh, move this layer box. Kind of move it into place where it makes sense. Yep, that's fine. Uh, our biggest optimization was done by evenly distributing and moving everything left. Now we can just kind of kind of take the easy route to just get this done really quick. Okay, that's pretty well optimized. I'm going to take it a little bit further. I want to move this, this red one left. So I'll grab all of these. Once again, I'll go align left. And now I'm going to, I'm going to select everything. Hold shift to deselect my material rectangle. So now all I have is my objects that I want to cut. And I like to leave a little bit of space away from where the cut starts or away from the edge of the material. So I'm going to say 0. Uh, point 0.1 tab 0. 0.1 and what that did is it shifted everything a little bit to the right a little bit down That way I know for sure all these pieces are going to be cut out all of this stuff Control a to select everything. You know what? Here's where hiding something comes in handy Let's grab this perimeter boundary box right click and we haven't used purple yet or black I'll just put it on black and then make sure like I said it is on ignore and now on this layer tab I can just hide the background, hide it, deselect, there we go. Everything's placed where we need it to be. I need to cut it all out. So I'm going to select all of this, make sure that actually my, my uh, material, I need to put uh, three millimeter basswood plywood so that I can use the reference there. Now I select everything. Now I go from scoring to cut and reference. I'm referencing off of the stored values for uh, that three millimeter plywood from here. All I have to do is press the button, let it cut, and then we can have some fun assembling. I want to briefly mention templates because it's super handy with this with any machine like this. This is the X-Tool P2, and while it does have two cameras, a wide-angle lens camera right here, and then a uh, zoom lens right here that you can position, you, you really want a repeatable 0-0 position, the home position of the mach machine, so you know where to start every single thing. So on the software side of things, the zero, 0 position is all the way to the top and all the way to the left. So it's this corner over here. My CNC machine and the majority of all CNC machines, CNC machines, it's forward and left is the zero, 0 position. But we need to know exactly where that corner is. So when we use repeatable material, like this piece of plywood right here, all we have to do is line it up into that corner so we're good to go from now on forever. It's way more repeatable then simply setting this down and then trying to line up your corner with the cameras and all that. Cameras are great. Templates are better for stuff that you repeat. So in order to make a template, what I recommend getting is some of this 1 8 of an inch hardboard, tempered hardboard. When you cut it, it's a little more sooty than basically everything else. It stinks, so it's not the best material to build with. Uh, but it's great for templates because it is so cheap. A four foot by eight foot sheet of this stuff is $13 locally to me. Anyway, you get a piece of this material and you push it all the way to the back wall underneath the, um, can you see it? Yeah, underneath this little uh, electrical port here, all the way to the left. So it's at a repeatable location. Then you use the software to create a rectangle that is the exact size of the maximum working area of this machine and then you cut it out with the top left corner in the software referencing off of zero, zero. This gives you a little template like this that is, it's a lifesaver. It is super, super handy to position material over and over again. I've got templates like this for various other uh, things that you do over and over again. Anyway, now that I know where to put my material, I'm making sure that the grain is running left and right, which is similar to the, uh, the pieces that are being cut out left and right. And uh, let's get this cut. In case you are wondering, that took three minutes and 59 seconds to cut out. 
Here's a handy tip for you if you're using a dust extractor. I have one of these uh, remote receptacles. There's two receptacles uh, controlled by one wireless remote. On one side, this yellow wire, that powers my smoke extractor. And on the other side, that powers this little light. So when I need to use the dust extractor rather than, or the smoke extractor, rather than turning the knob every single time because it's located on the floor, bending over, that's annoying, use one of these remotes. That way you can turn it on and off wirelessly, but also hook up a light to it. That way, without question, if you have hearing protection in or whatever, you can always see visually, hey, the fan, the extractor is running. Now it's turned off. To assemble this, I'm just using regular medium CA glue and a precision applicator here, a really fine applicator needle. And maybe, I'm not sure, maybe a little bit of accelerator to uh, speed up the process. I've built so many of these benches over the years and some of these little details are coming back to me. Like for example, on the side leg assembly like this, I remember sizing this gap so you could use another 2x4 as a perfect spacer to locate the lower one. And because everything is according to scale, I can use another 2x4 to locate this, this lower stretcher right here. To make sure that the both, both backs are in the same angle exactly, I took the one that was already completed, this is the opposite side, and I laid it in place so that all of the front geometry lines up, made some reference lines on this piece, and then I can just be ensured that uh, this should all line up pretty darn good. I have found that these 321 setup blocks are very, very handy when it comes to positioning stuff that has to be absolutely perpendicular to another face. So this stretcher goes down right here and connects both side pieces together. And I think this is a, a good situation to use this activator. So this <laughs> this is this is a lot of fun. Borderline too much fun. I, I'm my gears are turning up in my head thinking of all the different ways that uh, this could be beneficial for furniture makers. Imagine you have a you know a design consultation with a client, and instead of at the very you know the the final consultation, instead of just sliding over some some paper that has the rendering or whatever, you just set the project down and right in front of them to scale and. Oh wow, they can pick it up and interact with it and, and just see it from all different angles with shadows and such and they think this is this is a legit thing, you know, it's not just some concept on a piece of paper. I think that is a valuable selling point. Um, I also see the, the benefit of just creating it for your own personal uses as far as working out designs. Maybe you have a whole library of furniture that you've already created and you have a, a young child or a grandchild all along the way <laughs> you want to make them some some toy furniture. Uh, this is so much fun, and I honestly, this is more, this is more durable than I, than I thought it would be. Uh, this is just eighth of an inch plywood, right? And a lot of CA glue and activator, and <laughs> anyway, this is this is a lot of fun. If you're interested in the XCS file for both of these, I'll have them linked in the description or whatever. If you want to download them and cut these out for free and, and tinker around with what I've done. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I will say, if you do get the files to this, um, I, I messed up the back. Actually, I'll fix it before I actually send it out. But I messed up the back and just didn't make it a little bit, I, I made it a little bit too narrow, so it doesn't fit inside this rabbit like it should. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this is a lot of fun. If you're interested in checking out the laser engraver that I used for all this stuff, it's the Xtool P2. I'll have a link down in the description below. It's, it's an affiliate link. If you purchase through it, I make a little bit of a commission. Your sales price doesn't change at all. Um, if you don't want to use that link, cool. That's fine, too. Uh, this is... <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I've got other things to do. Otherwise, I would be making a few more of these today. I think I'm going to make that 2x4 and 2x6 bunk bed that I previously made uh, the match that matches this particular one. I may actually make the entire bedroom set that I, my daughter is currently using in smaller form. That would be really cool. I think I'm going to do that. Uh, you guys take care. Have a great day and I'll talk to you in the next video.